Hiya, troops. My name's Skipper. You probably recognize me from my wildly successful Madagascar movies. I stole a lot of seeds and a lot of hearts. But I wasn't born a handsome and well-dressed movie star. No! The talented people at DreamWorks Animation made me what I am. Now keep up, Private. Yes, sir! There's no walk in the park making an animated feature film. It takes grit, spit, and a whole lot of duct tape to get these movies out there to John Q. Public. Now this beautiful piece of machinery here is the pipeline. Movies flow in only one direction in my version, but in reality, a scene can make stops out of order, in reverse loop-de-loop, -loop, you get the picture. But we're gonna keep it simple for now and go straight forward through this baby. We have 15 stops to make, so strap on your safety goggles, hold on to your butts, and let's dive into the first stop. Commence operation, make a movie. First stop, story. Now, great movie ideas don't just jump into our laps. Some are completely original. Some come from children's books, comic strips, really just about anywhere. But here's some exclusive intelligence from the front lines. Madam Director. The director's role in the movie is to have the vision for the film so that the three or 400 people working on the film can all be working towards the same purpose. First, we have a script, but the movie is not just a script. We have to visualize it into the medium that you will see in the theater. And the first step to do that is to do a storyboard. The job of a story artist is to take the script and to kind of draw out the comic book version of the movie. And we draw thousands of drawings to kind of come up with a sequence. And we take that, we pitch it back to the director, to the story team and producers. They get the visual concept of what the script could be. If everybody likes it, which is doubtful. Well, it's not that doubtful. We do good work, and sometimes they really like it. The story panels are turned over to the editorial department. Yeah! Ugh! Ugh! Shiitake mushrooms! Editors cut the sketches together in a story reel so the directors, producers, and executives can see a blueprint of the movie. Truth is, this elite unit has their mitts on the film throughout the entire process. How's it going there, editorial? <laughs> you keeping up? <laughs> That's right, Skipper. We take the storyboard panels and we build a sequence out of those. At that time, of course, we don't have any dialogue because the actors have not recorded yet. So we record ourselves doing the voices, the director, what storyboard artists, whoever's kind of around who can do a like relatively good performance. We then add a little music, sound effects, whatever's needed to tell the story. We try to make it as polished as possible. So that storyboard reel becomes the sort of foundation of the movie. Normally, editing is associated with the, the post production side of movie making but in this case you're right there at the very beginning you're, you're throughout the whole process but at the very beginning is quite critical because you're still trying to figure out what the movie's about and it's really great to be part of that process Ooh, ah, ah, holy polywogs cursed my dibble diet hey who left these paint cans lying around Kathy sorry skipper the art department is made of a bunch of artists, and they're called visual development artists. The reason is because they develop things visually. The film has to have a look. So the artists will sit down at their computer, or at their pencil and paper, or whatever medium they work in, and they will create what the film looks like. Everything from the characters, to the props, to the environments, every single thing that you see in the film is designed by an artist. And it gets approved by the art director or production designer, and then we as an art department put it in front of the director to see if it's the film that he wants to make. <laughs> Now this troops is the modeling department. They have a tough job around here. Tougher than making a soup sandwich. Tell them what you do, Brian. Modeling, uh, we basically build all the characters, the environments, the props. Everything you see in a film, uh, we, it, it has to be built, it has to be created. We receive two-dimensional artwork from the art department and it's our job to bring it into the third dimension to give it volume. The other thing that we do is we create or we sculpt uh, the characters. We get drawings from uh, the character designers, and then what we do is we end up with an armature or a wireframe of the character, and then we have to uh, basically sculpt that character and make it look good from every possible angle. 
I'm just held together with wires. That makes me feel empty inside. Now modeling hands off all their digital sculptures to rigging. Riggers, or character TDs, uh, design how the character moves. We're essentially uh, puppet makers. We place all of the joints, muscle, and fat underneath the skin. Hey, who are you calling fat? Sure, I'm a little chubby, but underneath is a svelte armature. And we make all of the skin deform, so every little wrinkle that you see, every facial expression, that's a control that we put in so that the animators can take this digital puppet and act with it. Now, I've been called a lot of things, but fat and puppet are not my favorites. So let's move onward, shall we? We'll slide into the surfacing department next. Coming out of modeling, characters, props, and environments are flat and gray. Yikes! Not my best look. Surfacing artists add colors and textures, making the surfaces look smooth and shiny like glass. Bumpy and gritty like dirt. Or slick and suave like a handsome penguin. Surfacing artists determine the surface quality of particular assets or characters. Basically, the color, the texture, or how the light interacts with the surface itself. So we have a material library which is comprised of like metals, woods, um, plastics, and that kind of thing. So take metal, for example. It can have paint on top of it. It can have dirt. It can have um, rust. It can have scratches, various things, and we would add that. Flippin' fish sticks! There's my cheesy devils. I wondered where those went. Rough layout is where all the pieces start coming together. It's where the movie starts looking like, uh, well, a movie. Rough layout is an interesting department because it comes sort of at the nexus point of pre-production and production. So we receive information in the form of storyboards from the story department and then recreate them in 3D space on the computer with a virtual camera where we determine the cinematography for the film and the initial staging and blocking for the characters. So we're sort of the gateway into production. Final layout. Sounds like we're almost done. But guess what? We're not, by a long shot. That's right, Skipper. After Rough Layout finishes their shots, the first job we do is to prepare the shots for animation, and that's called anim prep. We'll create a master shot, replacing all the simplified characters in geometry with a higher res version that other departments have created. And we'll prepare that for animation by placing in the character in a start position, and animation will take that scene and, and animate it. Then the shot will come back to us and we'll do final set dressing. We also do a stereo pass where we'll set the stereo for the left and the right eye. We are preparing the final composition. We look for opportunities to try to have it an immersive experience and to draw in the audience. The character animators start bringing the characters to life. So in traditional animation, we used to draw all the keyframes of the character, and then that would get played back at 24 frames per second. So nowadays, we don't really draw that much anymore. We really just kind of pose out the character using this CG puppet. Um, there's sometimes 3,000 controls in one character. With the dragons on How to Train Your Dragon, we had five to 6,000 controls. Animation is basically like, if you were to compare it to live action filmmaking, we're kind of like the actors. So we'll look at reference online, we'll shoot reference in the acting room, and then we'll import that a lot of times into our software, and we'll use that to start animating. We try to bring the personality and the performance to the characters, and we figure out how they walk, how they talk, how they move. Now remember, that elite unit editorial has been keeping the movie together this whole time. <laughs> How's it going there, editorial? You keeping up? Yes, Skipper! Tight fit! Oh, I wish I didn't find those cheesy devils. Someone slimmed down my wireframe. The crowds department is in charge of the extras of the film. That's right, Skipper. Ideally, an animator in the animation department would be able to animate all the characters on screen. But if there's just too many to handle, then that becomes property of the crowd department, because there's just no way that one human can animate all those things. So we'll try and uh, achieve the performance that the director wants through automated ways. We'll create just a few little animations that can be applied en masse to a whole bunch of characters. Uh, walking, talking, buying a hot dog, whatever actions we need for a particular scene. And then we'll take all those actions and put them together with a brain, like a, like a robot brain that decides what actions to use when. And in the end, we can achieve a performance that looks like uh, a crowd doing a multitude of different actions. 
Character effects are all the things on a character's body that need movement and style. The character effects department is responsible for everything that's moving on a character that is not the character animation itself. We do clothing simulation, hair dynamics, fur interaction, prop animation, anything that characters interacting with. If we need to put the squish in a character's fingers when they interact with the object, if they sit on a couch and the cushions underneath them need to bulge and um, deform, that's character effects. Time for effects. The fun stuff. Explosions, demolitions, massive wreckage and destruction. The kids love it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not just explosions and demolitions. We do a ton of different things. We at effects like have to pay attention to all the little details that you take for granted in live action. So little things like uh, footprints or like leaves rustling in the wind, we actually make those happen. And it's not just that. When you have uh, dragons or fairies changing color, like, you know, we come up with techniques to do things that uh, nobody has seen before on screen. The other end is like make sure the fire or the smoke cooks just right. So we are the general problem solvers of the production pipeline. In other words, we get nothing for free. Hoover damage. The pipe has sprung a leak. Korski, secure those lug nuts. Excelente. And that's why we have TDs, or technical directors, to step in when disaster strikes. This pipe has more twists and turns than a whale's intestines. Don't ask me how I know. Just keep up, troops. Next up is the matte painting department. So in our animated movies, the characters act on a set that comes from modeling. We take care of everything that's beyond that set. So lots of skies, lots of clouds and mountains, vistas of all sorts, sometimes cityscapes. The art department does wonderful color keys that kind of inform what they want to see in the backgrounds. Uh, then we take uh, assets built from models that may exist beyond that point of the set and do paintings that use the art's color keys as like a touch base. What you end up with is an image which is like the last puzzle piece that slides in the back of everything. Hey, turn on the lights. Without lighting, stuff would be really uh, dark. So in lighting, we take the cameras, we take the models, we take the animation, and we take the surfacing, and we use computer animated lights. We then use our compositing software to combine that with the matte painting um, to get the overall look of the final shots. We're always looking for ways to bring more emotion to the tale to create compositions that help tell the story. Hey, this thing's starting to look classy. That time. Ooh, ooh, things look steamy down in editorial. Yep, things are moving nicely. Clean up. Image finaling artists clean up all the popping, buzzing, smuts, and other undesirable rendering artifacts from our images. Well, we're just about out of this gorgeous pipe. And what do you think comes out of the other end? A movie! Almost, Skipper. First, we have to complete the music and sound. While all that great work is being done at DreamWorks campuses, a composer comes in and writes some music that heightens and enhances the story, and will record the actual score with an orchestra. Then the final mix happens, where audio levels, the equalization, the perspective and special treatments on dialogue are all mixed into the final version of the film. And Viola! A perfectly formed animated feature film is born. Hello, little guy. We started with an idea, wrote a script, storyboarded, Visualized, matte painted, modeled, rigged, surfaced, recorded, laid out, animated, affected, did, lit, and boom. Released. That, friends, is how you make a movie. Nice.